So we did WBS. Right? Okay, so the recall that we spoke about um, project starts, project ends, project creates something unique. And that each project is unique, but the way we manage a project is the same. We follow project management processes. We're speaking about project management processes. Project management processes are grouped into five groups. <clears throat> Initiating, planning, executing, controlling, and closing. The essence of project management, the difference between the managed project and the unmanaged project is in planning. The prestazione, the performance of a project, can only be stood, understood, with respect to what? Goals. Well, costs. Time, but what do these so the status of a project is it late, is it early, is it over budget, is it under budget can only be understood with respect. What does it mean? A plan. And who makes the plan? Project manager. So why should a project ever be late if it's properly planned? Okay. Every decision in project management must be understood with respect to five things. They are scope, schedule, budget, risk position, uncertainty position, yes, and one more. Most important one, people, stakeholders. Those five things, every decision. Underlying technology, other aspects, fine. What it finally must be decided on is what is the impact of scope, schedule, cost, the team, and uncertainty posture, uncertainty position? So we finished by creating a WBS, a word breakdown structure, <clears throat> and I believe we finished reviewing that. We completed that. So that serves as input. Now we know what we want to create. <clears throat> Remember, planning is about who, what, when, where, why, and how. So we know what. Now we talk about who and how. Or when. Who and when. <coughs> the primary input to the schedule process would be what? Primary input to creating the schedule. Selecting a date for the end. Selecting dates, close, but what is the input? The scope. Scope, which is known as the WBS. Mm -hmm. All right? <coughs> the So schedule planning is about describing who will do what, when they will do it, to create the scope. <clears throat> the primary input to the scheduling process is the WBS, or the scope baseline. The primary output is the schedule. Once the schedule is agreed to, it's frozen and becomes the schedule baseline. Scheduling begins by describing the tasks required to create the scope. So the next step is what tasks will be performed to create the scope. <coughs> Once the tasks are identified, the next step is to estimate how much effort will be required. 
Effort is work. And in work, you've studied physics, there are two components, force and time. Effort is measured in typically person days, person weeks, typically. Typically person days because now projects are shorter than they used to be. In the past projects were often measured in person weeks or person months. Now typically person days. <clears throat> so the duration of a task we have two concepts, very important to understand. Effort consists of person hours or person days. <coughs> oh my goodness. Excuse me. <laughs> no, no, you can let it run. <coughs> I assume you're going to edit this. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Excuse me. So, in estimating, the only thing estimated is effort. Effort is estimated. The amount of work required to complete the task is estimated. <clears throat> the duration is different from effort. Duration is how long it will take from the time we start working on the task until we finish that task. Duration is measured in units of time. So if work, effort, is time and force, then to arrive at effort, you have to do a calculation. So, for example, if we have an effort of five person days and one person works on it continuously, what is the duration? Five days. Five days. If two people work on it, <coughs> two and a half days. If one person works on it half time, Ten days. Ten days. If one person works on it full time, but they're not such a good worker, their productivity is only 50%. Ten days. Ten days, Ten days again. So the calculation, given effort to calculate duration, you must consider number of people assigned, how much of their time they are assigned, and how productive they are. <clears throat> so, the formula to calculate duration is Resource. <clears throat> resource is the number of people applied and their productivity. Now, that is the theory. Realistically, um, in practice, you can slice the bologna too thin. Do you understand that? Okay. La mortadella. Si può trattare anche troppo fine. Un po' assurdo. This is theory. In practice, in practice, only one resource should be assigned to a task. Why? If you assign a task to two people, which one is responsible? No one. So you assign the task to one person. If it's a big task, define two subtasks. Assign those to a person. 
<clears throat> In a typical project, contemporary project, task duration should be no more than about one week. Typically, in a contemporary project, you have a status meeting every week. The duration of tasks in the schedule should not be more than one status reporting period. That way you know, finished or not finished. If you define a task one month, 25% finished, what does that mean? <clears throat> so, better to define subtasks of short duration. Define subtasks, assign one per person. If you have a task of 30 days, uh, let's say uh, 20 days, 20 work days, and you assign four people, in theory, how long should it take? In theory, it should take five days. Now, <clears throat> an example. You have a project. It will take nine months. Okay. <clears throat> oh my gosh. This is going to drive me crazy or you crazy. You have a project that will take nine months. You assign nine people. How long should it take? One month. But some tasks cannot be subdivided. Allora, the task is have a baby. It takes nine months. So we assign nine women. Do we get a baby in one month? No. <clears throat> Clearly no. Because some tasks cannot be subdivided and assigned to more people. All right, another example. We want to cook a meal at home. And mom is cooking the meal. But she's a little bit late. So she says, Davide, can you help me? And so instead of taking two hours, maybe it takes one hour to prepare the meal. All right? Let's go further. Um, we're very late. So we assign 14 people to help. Do we finish sooner or we finish later? So <clears throat> important notion. The time a task takes, number of people assigned. With one person assigned, a task may take this long. So uh, one, two. With two people, maybe it will take less time. Three, four, five. You see that? It doesn't make sense to continue to add people. In fact, there's a famous axiom called Brooks' Law to add more people to a late software project only makes it later. Why? You lose time in communications, you lose time training people, complexity increases. So, adding more people to a late software project usually makes it later. By the way, that's true in my experience as well. <clears throat> in scheduling tasks, it's often true, it's almost always true, that before I can start one task, I must finish a previous task. 
Example, um, before I can serve the pasta, I have to cook it. It also happens that two tasks must finish at the same time. Example, give me an example of two tasks that must finish at the same time. Let's use, as an example, cooking dinner. You need the pasta and also the tomato sauce at the same time. Otherwise, can... They finish at the same time. So that everything comes to the table at the right time. It also often happens that two tasks start at the same time, but they don't finish at the same time. So, as an example, we serve the food, and the waiter starts bringing the food, and another waiter starts serving the wine. The wine is finished, the waiter continues to bring the food throughout the meal. So the tasks start at the same time, and they finish when they finish. So we can define relationships between tasks, finish, start, finish, finish, and start, start. So these are task dependencies. By the way, all of this is in your catechismo. <coughs> I have a reservation for a flight on Friday. Let us say I finish my work early. Can I leave early? I have to wait. So even though there is no task dependency, I'm still constrained. So there are often constraints with respect to dates. So when you schedule, you must consider resource availability, task interdependencies, and date constraints. All of this plus effort calculate duration. Now, it's important to understand. We often talk about estimating the schedule. We don't estimate the schedule. We calculate the schedule. What is the, the only thing we estimate? The effort. Effort. We only estimate effort. Everything else is calculated. And by the way, we don't do manual calculations. The software does the calculation. Usually, usually when you create the schedule, the first iteration doesn't work. It's too long. It's possible to improve the schedule by changing resource assignments, by adding more resources within limits, by subdividing tasks so that two tasks, one task, it took 10 days, now you make two tasks five days and make them happen at the same time. There are a number of techniques which you can use to improve the schedule. <coughs> Within limits, when you create the schedule, there is always at least one series of tasks, one right after the other, where if anything is delayed, the entire project is delayed. Plus there are many other tasks that can be delayed somewhat. This percorso of tasks is referred to as the critical path. So if anything changes, the end date moves. Most of the risk in a project is usually associated with the critical path. 
Because if anything changes, the schedule is, is affected. When you optimize the schedule and compress the schedule, as we described, by subdividing tasks, by adding more people, typically the schedule becomes compressed and you have multiple critical paths. The more compressed the schedule, the more critical paths, the more critical paths, remember five considerations. You compress the schedule, you've just changed something. What is the impact of scope, schedule, cost, the budget, and uh, people, and risk? If you compress the schedule, you have more critical paths, what have you impacted? What have you affected? Potentially people, absolutely. And you have changed what? Risk. You've, you've absolutely increased risk. More critical paths, more uncertainty. <clears throat> One of the, the very important things that a project manager must do is balance all of these considerations. The five things, you look at the schedule, you add resources, you compress the schedule, but now you've added risk, too much risk, maybe you change a few things, you optimize the five variables. Scheduling, the most error prone part of project management is estimating. Everything depends on your estimate. The budget is largely determined by the schedule. Especially in an IT project, software project, because so much depends on the resources. <clears throat> so, the Achilles heel in project management, talone, of, in project management, assuming you have good requirements, the punto di debolezza, the weak point, the Achilles heel, is estimated. Because the schedule depends on the estimate, the budget depends on the estimate. They're calculated based on estimating. If your project is poorly planned, it becomes late, it becomes over budget, typically because you've done a poor job estimating. So two areas to focus on. First, you must have good requirements. Second, everything depends on a good estimate. But if you've done a good job with requirements and a good job with WBS, then your estimates can usually be more accurate. Is that enough theory? Not getting trouble, huh? So, last statement. Once completed and agreed to, we've created the schedule baseline and it is put under change control. Now you cannot change it without formally using the change management process, which we will discuss. There are two principal graphs used in schedule management. The first is a precedence diagram. And the second is a Gantt chart. A precedence diagram shows the relationship between tasks. Finish, 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 start, start, start. By the way, the vast majority of relationships are finish, start. This task must start before that one can finish. So here you see a precedence diagram that shows the relationship between tasks. Here you see a Gantt that shows the time relationship of tasks. 
these two graphs are used extensively in project management software, Depot Microsoft Project, obviously, to visually understand the schedule. By the way, <clears throat> a schedule is not a plan. A schedule is one element of a plan. And a Gantt is not a schedule. And it's certainly not a plan. A Gantt is a visual representation of part of the schedule. But very often in life, people refer to a Gantt as my plan. That's absolutely wrong. The schedule represents the entire schedule represents who will do what, when, and all of the relationships among those tasks and all of the details associated with each task, all the resource assignments and the availability of resources all go into the schedule. A Gantt usually only represents who and when. So, a Gantt is not a schedule, a schedule is not a plan. Next step, task list. So, we get in our groups. You can use the same, the same results from the previous exercise. So we will all have, we will have three different task lists. Um, make maybe three or four tasks for maybe five items in the WBS. So, <clears throat> continue with outline style. Remember, now we're talking about tasks. So, my advice, it's not a rule, it's not a standard, it's my suggestion. For WBS elements, use only uppercase. For tasks, use only lowercase. Mm -hmm. Again, this is not a standard, this is not a rule, it's just something that I have learned that's very effective. So, continue with the, uh, the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe five, maximum eight WBS elements for each, three to five. So in the end, you should have about 25 tasks. Only define the tasks. Okay? When you look at the tasks, once all of the tasks are complete, the WBS item should be complete. So if you complete all the tasks, the WBS element is complete. When you complete all of the WBS ele sub-elements, the element SOPRA is complete. So choose one WBS element, several sub-elements, make tasks, choose another, make tasks. Under those. And uh, how do we make rela relations uh, between the tests? Um, we will do that later yeah. on a worksheet and you will see. So right now we're not doing the schedule, we're doing the task list. So in the planning process we have mission requirements, business requirements, system requirements, WBS, task list is next. Then we do the schedule. Okay? Questions? Ready? All right. Get in your groups, make your task list, and if you have questions, I'm available. Thank you.